but they found that there were reports of access that these paramilitary groups had to mortars and also intercontinental ballistic missiles, but it hasn't been tested because they didn't engage them in warfare, so they're not sure whether they have them or they don't. Two gangs met, and they ratified their treaty, assisted by Muslims. One of the ratifications took place in a masjid near Compton. And it was the beginning of the peace treaty between the two largest gangs on the West Coast, which is the gang capital of the planet, a place that hadn't known peace since 1965. And now people start looking at the option of, let's see if peace can work. It was a remarkable time. People that had been enemies, parents hadn't seen their children in 20 years. Aunt hadn't seen her niece. Uncle hadn't seen his nephew. Brothers hadn't seen each other in years. And if they did, it was behind the barrel of their guns. Now they're sitting down and eating. There began to be a change between blacks, Mexicans, and the Arabs of Long Beach and Michigan and other places. You had 500,000 Arabs in California gangbanging that considered hanging it up. Very serious thing. Now, it was at this time that one of the great ghetto stars of the West Coast monster, Cody Scott, becomes a Muslim while in prison. And the Bloods and Crips to foster solidarity made an album together. The language on the album is most certainly parental advisory it was not intended for a preschool audience but i will say that for where they're from and coming from the west coast myself it was probably one of the most positive things i could have ever heard from them i didn't hear the whole thing but i heard sections uh what could have been heard from them but things started to happen in 1414 AH, record executives created gangster rap. This was an industry-led form of rap music which removed the political and social, social message of street knowledge hip-hop and lined the inside of it with violence instead. No political message. I have all the guns. I have all the women. I never lose a fight. I can't be stopped. I won't be stopped. And I'm invincible. And you can be too. Young kid tries it, gets his head kicked in, gets killed. Doesn't understand why. Because you listen to this record, and if you're bad and you're invincible, you go try it on someone else, you'll be fine. He goes and tries it on someone else and gets hammered. How could this have happened? And you have thousands of young, suburban, white, no ghetto living, rich house living in, everything having kids wishing that they'd been colored and born in the ghetto. And since they can't be, we're going to vicariously become black, vicariously become Mexican, and live in this state of being gangsta. And then you have the poor Asian youth. He wants to be Jamaican. The Jamaicans want to be black. And the blacks are in a pitiable situation. So he's only getting it third hand. He's a third hand fake gangster. He's not even getting the uncut fake gangster. He's getting it filtered. And so now you're starting to see the young Muslim brothers, the Asian with the ear pierced and the gold teeth. He's got a problem with his pants. He's got all types of other situations and the parents have a problem with him having problems with his pants. I've tried to speak with him. Can't reason with him. Don't know what's wrong with him. And when he's speaking, it sounds like a cross between a mumble and a cat being choked. This is gangster rap. And you'll be checking through his room and you'll find a few albums that, what are these doing here? There's a man on the front brandishing a rifle. What's this? Must be something to do with, I don't know, duck hunting. 
Then you turn it on and you wish you never had. Gangster rap. It seems to be, it's affecting some of the females, but it's the bravado aspect of it is definitely male. It's definitely male. Young guy, he, he doesn't feel convinced on being Asian, so let's try out being black. See how it works. I might just get inducted in, grandfathered into the, the black culture. But that is a farce itself. So this is part of what happened with the rise of gangster rap. White fans took to it immediately. Copies flew off the shelf. This is also the same year there was a partial collapse of the truce between the East Coast, Hoover Criminal, A-Tray, and Rolling Sixties, and the war resumed in 1416. So the peace treaty had lasted, I mean, it was a sweet few years. But some people couldn't let go of the fact that you killed my best friend. You killed my brother. You killed my cousin. You killed my dad. You killed so-and-so. And I cannot forgive you for that. So some people couldn't let go. They just couldn't. They just couldn't. The Warren Commission, which is a commission that deals with issues of race, released its second report that people of color in the United States are worse off, they're worse off than they were during the times of segregation in the 50s and 60s. They're actually worse off. That's the Warren Commission. Might I remind you, the Warren Commission, these are, these are white people. So their understanding of the politics of the U.S. is correct. This would be the same year that while in prison, B.G. Knockout would become Muslim use his life tact as a lesson to other youth considering the wrong choices. He would be released a few years later to his Compton neighborhood. He had a massive impact on Compton when he went back. Osama bin Laden told Muslims to stay out of high buildings in the year 1420 AH, especially those around New York. After this message, Mullah Muhammad Omar of the Taliban movement seized his equipment and said that he was not a qualified scholar. You can find these things in the library if you look up a lot of the history, do your own research. Um, lumping the Taliban in with Al-Qaeda is a very dangerous move because they're very different. And the two Jama'at have very little in common other than the fact that they have beards and they both say that they're Muslim. There's a lot of disparity between those two Jama'as. Especially before the September 11, 2001 attacks. It's so strange that right after they just became this contiguous lump. Let me say something very quickly before wrapping all this up. After the 11th of September 2001 attacks, the Taliban stated very clearly on the news report in the BBC News through their translator in Karachi, or their, their minister in Karachi, if there is evidence that you have that Osama bin Laden did this, submit it to us and we will look at it. They submitted the evidence. The Taliban called 1,000 of their best scholars from across the country and they met. They met and signed a massive fatwa stating that Osama bin Laden should now leave Afghanistan. You can do your own research. Find it yourself. So how Taliban is sort of lumped with Osama bin Laden, I'm not saying that Taliban is without fault, but I'm saying the two jamaas cannot be more different. Taliban, insular, based upon self-preservation and preserving Afghanistan. Al-Qaeda, offensive wars on perceived enemies that are seen as either kuffar, meaning Muslims that have gone astray, or upon unbelievers and executing uh, offensive wars, which declaring jihad is the position of the scholars or a khalifa. And they filled that void and believed themselves to have the right to do so. 1422 A.H., was the year of the 11th of September 2001 attacks. And just one day before that on Monday, Ahmed Shah Mas'ud was assassinated by Al-Qaeda operatives using a suicide bomb hidden in a camera. This was the first suicide bombing in Afghanistan. Hanafi Fiqh is very, very clear that suicide bombing is not halal. They're very clear on that point. So when this happened, they knew uh, that in Afghanistan, the people, they knew that it was not them because there's only four scholars who hold the position 
of the licitness of suicide bombing, and it has to be military targets and in very limited circumstances. The vast majority of this ummah do not hold that position, and two of the four scholars retracted their position, looking at it now 20 years on and seeing that it doesn't work. There was also the year 1426 AH, the 7-7 attacks occurred, and around the same time the Madrid attacks. The third Iraq war was in full swing since 1424, and the country had been divided into three sections of no-fly zones since the first Gulf War conflict. Since the completion of the effort of dispersing the Taliban and toppling Saddam Hussein and his later execution, people in the United States and the United Kingdom have now felt the uncertainty that the rest of the world has lived with since the days of colonization and their parasitic devouring of natural resources. This has continued to be the case up until 1432 today. Is there... Looking at this, any doubt that we've covered a momentous amount of history, I want to state, start by saying how grateful I am that you've all been able to get through this and listen to it. It was very hard on you. As I said, I've tried to tone down my accent, but it's gotten worse in years. Uh, so I, um, I praise Allah that you've been able to bear this and your eardrums haven't bled. Second to this, um, also the fact of the amount of information that you've got through I hope that now, having looked at this totally from how the Muslim perspective is, you'll be able to put together the pieces of what was sold to you in school and realize that you were sold a crock. Finally, is there any question over any of what I've covered? Now we've got a possibility of looking at all 13 centuries. If something hit you a certain way and you were wondering where did this come from or what have you, now it's whatever was in your mind about these 13 centuries or the addendum that we did today. You're free to ask anything you like. Is there a question? No? One. Yeah. Well, in the case of AIDS, yeah, is, even today, is there still any case with the, those people who are actually homosexual? Question is regarding AIDS. Is AIDS still today uh, seen and primarily among homosexuals? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> It is primarily still among homosexuals today, but it was seen that it could hit anybody when Irvin Magic Johnson of the LA Lakers contracted AIDS. When he got AIDS, it was just heterosexuals were stunned because they thought, wow, anyone can get AIDS now. You know, it's not just gay cancer, anyone can get it. But at first, when he got it, they thought, well, maybe magic job because he said no 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 I'm not I'm married I've got several children they thought well maybe he could be no I don't right so he had to first of all once it was proved that he had AIDS he then had to spend the rest of his time proving that he wasn't bisexual or homosexual and then once that was established then it was said okay heterosexuals can get this as well right so it is now seen as a disease that anyone can get but primarily the high risk groups and the highest amount of people that do contract AIDS virus are still homosexuals. Still. Yeah. Is there another question? Yes. So you know the uh, gentrification is yes. led to making a ghettos? Question is, did gentrification lead to what made the ghettos? Alhamdulillah. Sometimes it was used and sometimes it was used to keep ghettos where they were. They would be used to create ghettos when people would move in and the whites would move out and you would take the industry with you. That's part of the way it was used. If a ghetto was already there and it had some industry left, gentrification in the second phase would start where they would actually remove all the industry and everything else. Because the first part had already been done by you moving into that area. Yes? Yes? Okay. If there's no final question, then inshallah we'll close from here. Yes? Just a very quick one. Yes. Reading the book by uh, Professor Tayo Gadri on Mehdi. And obviously, when you finish the, the up until the 14th, uh, 15th, and the Hijra, um, obviously, there's more to come. Uh, what, are, what are your views in relation to uh, the Mehdi and uh, the Jal? What is the likely, likely period? But in the book, it, per, it puts this theory across based on his study of all the hadith that. If the time was right now, there's lots of things that are to happen which haven't happened, 
for instance, India is going to become a superpower, as is mentioned in, in one of the hadith and some other things. It's more than likely it's going to happen in the next millennium rather than this millennium, which would indicate that you're talking about 600, maybe 700 years away from today. Um, so just really your views on, on the future in relation to the uh, maybe. 